Well, it's that time of year again. It is time for this year's mid-year book freak out tag. Welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Katrina, and I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week, and the movie reviews here at the weekend. In the description box below, you will find all of my social links, including my blog and my Goodreads, where I think I've reviewed most of the books that I'm going to talk about here, because they're obviously either big winners or not um, in this video. I will leave last year's mid-year book freak out tag linked up above in case you missed it. Um, but yes, the questions will be linked in the description box. And of course, these are all kind of like my opinions and it's so difficult to pick answers for some of these. It took me literally half an hour to sit down and come up with these answers. So let's jump right in. First of all, best book you've read so far in 2021. I'm currently sitting at just over 100 books read, so it's quite hard to pick. So I've got a fiction and a non-fiction, and I have videos talking about both of these books. So in terms of fiction, I would say that as it stands, my favourite fiction book so far this year is Bad Choices by Lucy Vine. I will link the video where I talk about this one up above just how much I love this one. This is an adult rom-com and it was just beautiful and it could have gone into a lot of other answers in the rest of this video as well. Um, so love the characters in this one, love the structure in this one and just, you know, instantly developed a crush on these characters. Like so many questions could be answered with Bad Choices by Lucy Vine. And then we have my favourite non-fiction that I've read so far this year, and that is Broken by Jenny Lawson, which I also have a whole video talking about where I um, complete the cross-stitch of Broken in the best possible way, um, because she talks about cross-stitch in that book. So it's part vlog, part review, but you get a full review from me, so I will leave that one linked up above as well. But definitely, definitely, this is my favourite non-fiction I've read so far this year. This one could also come into um, one of the most beautiful books I've bought this year because um, on the inside it's got this gorgeous pencil drawing of the cover um, and then the actual like naked book itself has her like Twitter avatar picture, the blog S. Um, so love that, definitely. Yeah, I, I would say that this was a fairly easy question to pick for because there's so many that I've enjoyed this year. And then it's been very polarizing, I feel like, 2021 so far. I've either really, really enjoyed books or they've been a big letdown and been not what I was expecting. So it's been like dividing of the waves there. Um, best sequel you've read so far in 2021. This one was on my most anticipated books of the year. Now this is, it's not necessarily a sequel, but it's book three in a three book series that take part in the same world. And so I'm counting it as a sequel and I want to share joy about this book. This one is Pumpkin by Julie Murphy, which is not a sequel, but kind of a sequel to Dumpling and Pudding, they take place in the same world and it's like this year's proms a drag. So if you liked uh, prom the movie, you will definitely enjoy this one. And I just love, 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 love this cover. So cool, so cool. So um, it is also very beautiful. And I listened to it on audiobook so I can vouch for the audiobook of this one as well. Okay, new release you haven't read yet but want to. As you are seeing this video, if you are watching it on upload day, today is the 24th of June, which means that it is release day for this book in the UK. So as you are watching this one, I will probably have started listening to my pre-order of the audiobook, um, but just know that I have pre-ordered this on audiobook. And this one is Someone I Used to Know by Paige Toon. Last year, I embarked on a Paige Toon readathon for her um, 2020 release that I loved and enjoyed. And I talked about that in a live video with Hayley. Um, so you've heard plenty about Page Tune on this channel, but this one, this was a very easy question to answer, a 2021 release that I have not read yet, 
but want to and as you are watching this if you're watching it on upload day i'm currently reading this very exciting i know nothing about it i just know it's page tune and it's going to be amazing and it features like fostering and adoption i'm so excited about that but i know it's going to make me want to be like i have to foster and adopt all the children that need fostering and adopting because anytime there's a storyline in a book or a movie around fostering and adoption it floors me and I'm like, no, I need, I need, I need to foster everybody and adopt everybody. So that's the effect I know that this is going to have on this one. And I've been told it's going to make me cry by people that have read samplers and early copies. So, you know, send, send positive thoughts to me and don't let me foster and adopt all the children. Um, then we have most anticipated release for the second half of 2021. Um, I'm going with a little uh, tie for this one. There's so many that I want to read. I talk about a few of them in my June TBR video in case you haven't seen that one. I do have a video coming up that kind of like counteract some of the things I said in that video um, because I've changed my reading strategy slightly um, but that video is coming up so you will see but we have The Start of Something by Miranda Dickinson which comes out on the 3rd of September I want to say but as you know Miranda Dickinson is one of my favourite authors but this is also tied with I don't have a cover for this one because again as you're watching this, the cover is being revealed in this author's newsletter today. Um, but my sort of tie with this one would be On a Night Like This by Lindsay Kelk, which is coming out in November. Um, very excited about that. And I have heard that there is a, a possible tour underway. So hopefully you will see me there and you will see vlog footage of that tour. So make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that because... If I'm there, you know I'll be vlogging it. And if it's happening, you know I'll be there. So uh, yeah, very excited about both of those titles. Two of my favorite authors. Um, two, three years ago, lost track of what year it is anyway. Um, I went to an event with both of those authors. So maybe it'll happen again. Maybe we'll have a, a Waterstones Birmingham recreation of that magical, wonderful event with all the laughs and all the hugs. All the hugs. I do hug these days. Um, right, number five, <laughs> biggest disappointment. I would say this would have to probably be Siri Who Am I by Sam Cheetah. Um, I don't know if I have a cover of this one because I was like, it was one of those, here we go. It was one of those that got pushed and pushed and pushed in 2020 and then eventually came out at the start of the year on paper it sounded great there was some real potential with it but then the deliverance was just like it was trying to be three different books at the same time and so that's why it was biggest disappointment because i loved the sound of it i love the premise and on paper it should have been a good book but actually on paper it was not um and i think if it had just stuck to doing one thing it would have been okay if we'd gone with the like amnesia from an accident and going through your phone and finding out about yourself that would have been fine and then it just kind of tries to do too many things all at once so i was excited about that one and the fact that it kept getting pushed and pushed in 2020 because i think it was on my like 2020 anticipated releases video um so yeah um and then we have two for biggest surprise because there are two of these that i was you might think well what were you doing reading them if you weren't expecting to like them but um I got sort of one of them I got recommended and I was like okay I'll give it a try and the other one I bought and kind of like put off reading because these two things both deal with um pandemics and I read these during the global pandemic um so the first one of these is The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue which is easily one of my favorite books of the year it's historical fiction it features a pandemic like what am I doing reading this um but actually the audiobook was fantastic the story really stuck with me and I just couldn't stop listening to it I listened to it basically all at once I just loved it so much highly highly recommend it um I need to read some more Emma Donoghue because I've read this and I've read room and both of them blew me away so yeah 
Pulled of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. And then the other book <laughs> dealing with a global pandemic that kills off lots of people that I think I don't have a picture of because I had a physical copy of it, which I have now passed along. But it's Severance by Ling Ma, which um, is set in New York. And I think it's the New York setting that kind of helped me like this one a little bit more than I expected to. I was like, oh, am I really going to be reading about a global pandemic and kind of post-apocalyptic, post-global pandemic um, during this time? But no, it was actually really compelling. It was really good fun. I liked what it had to say. I liked my, the main character um, and I would happily recommend it to you. And that surprises me. So yeah, two, four, biggest surprise. Okay, favorite new author. I feel like this will come as no surprise because I made videos talking about reading this author's basically entire back catalog. Technically, I read the first book from this author during December last year, during the um, Kindle Clear Out Readathon. Was that last year? It was something romance related. Maybe it wasn't Kindle Clear Out Readathon, but it was same people. Anyway, technically read the first one last year, but then decided to buddy read the rest of them with the lovely Hayley. And we did a live show talking about this one. And this is Christina Lauren. Um, I'm showing the soulmate equation because this one came out this year. This is Christina Lauren's uh, 2021 release. I don't know if we're getting another one in 2021. We possibly are, um, but I enjoyed this one. And yes, as I say, we have a whole video talking about this author and what we loved about these authors. And um, so I will leave that linked up above because really did enjoy that. Okay, uh, these next couple of ones were quite difficult because there are some characters that kind of stick in your head more than others, but then those come along and get overtaken. So these are ones I've read what feels like fairly recently, um, but I think that's just something that comes along with this question. So question number eight is newest fictional crush. This has to be uh, August from One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, which I haven't talked about here on this channel yet because I read this one this month in the month of June. I listened to the audiobook. It was fantastic. I was not a fan of Casey McQuiston's previous novel and I feel like the only person in the world that didn't love Red, White and Royal Blue. However, I absolutely adored One Last Stop. I loved August, who you can see here with her cup of coffee, coffee girl. And then I also loved Jane, um, who you can see on the subway, subway girl. Um, and this all takes place on the Q train, but we see August life outside of the Q train and her job in Billy's Pancake Diner. And I just, I loved her. I loved how kind of uncertain she was, but how determined she was. And yes, she is definitely my new fictional crush. Um, and then we have the kind of like similar question to this one. Question nine is newest favorite character. Um, and this one, this character is kind of still sticking with me now because this character is an influencer. Um, and I always like when authors include influencers in their novels in a positive way. We have a lot of people that write about influencers in a very negative way, but this one was a very positive influencer and there is so much more to this character than just an influencer, but you have to read the book to find out. And that is Ellie from The World at My Feet by Catherine Isaac. I have a whole video talking about why I enjoyed this book so much and why I love Ellie so much. And so I will leave that linked up above for you to watch and find out. But Yes, this was also a contender of one of my favourite books of the year because I love this book so much. And you know if I've made a standalone review video of a book, it's because I love it so much. So there you go. Um, then we are on to question 10, a book that made me cry. Um, and this one is unique because it is an audiobook that made me cry. And I actually had the author here on this channel. Um, and so you can you can hear her talking about that. But this is The Moon Over Kilmore Key by Carmel Harrington. Um, Carmel Harrington, I always pronounce that wrong. Um, and we have a lovely live interview here on this channel, which I will leave up above in the description box, wherever I've got links left. Um, and this one, is rare for an audiobook to make me cry. I feel like when I'm reading a physical book or an ebook, it's more likely to kind of touch me in that way. Whereas you feel you're like one more step disconnected when you are 
reading an audiobook. And so for an audiobook to make me cry, it made me gasp, it made me laugh, it made me cry, I identified with it. And, um, you know, we talk about that during the whole interview. So that was a definite, definite um, answer to that question straight away. Here we go, I have it here. The moon over Kilmulkey, I found her. Um, and then we have a book that made you happy. Um, this book, I feel like also probably made me cry as well. Um, but it also made me very, very happy. And it was a book that I sort of really needed to connect to at the time that I started listening to it. And it was one of those, as I've said, with multiple books that I've talked about so far in this tag, it was one of those that I started listening and I just didn't want to stop listening to it. And I listened to it in two big chunks. And this is The Best Is Yet To Come by Katie Collins. This is cross-generational uplift, absolutely. And um, again, I could identify with these characters. This book could easily have made me cry as well, but it made me just so, so happy. It was so heartwarming. And at the time that I read it, it was exactly the book I needed needed to read. I was having a very difficult reading month and so this book very much stuck out in that reading month but it is definitely one of my favourite books of the year so far so there you go. Um, then we have favourite book to movie adaptation you saw this year. I have a whole playlist of book versus movie videos that I have made so I will leave it linked up above or in the description box or in the end screen because you know I love a book versus movie video but this was 100% knew the answer to this one straight away. This may have been even the first answer I wrote down because this one is Moxie by Jennifer Matthew and um, the Netflix adaptation is wonderful. The strength of the women in this book was just amplified by the actors uh, that play them in the film and then the direction and the editing of the film and so it is 100% my favourite book to movie adaptation so far this year um, but you'll have to watch that video to see exactly why. Um, then we have favourite review you've written this year. This is a funny one because I do review almost everything that I read, whether it's just a short review or whether it's whole published review on my blog. I do get behind, but I try my best. Um, and so I kind of picked this one because I... There was something that stuck out for me personally in this book that I shouted out in my review that I think wouldn't touch some other people as well. Um, but I loved this book and this was As Far As You'll Take Me by Phil Stamper, which came out in February. And um, this one, I highlighted in my review how Phil Stamper managed to make me feel wistful and have like heartwarming feelings about the passport hall at Heathrow Airport. I hate the passport hall at Heathrow Airport whenever I'm in there. I'm always jet lagged because I've just spent nine hours on a plane that I haven't slept and you know, the sort of two, three hours before that in the airport. And then I'm in this queue of people that are also in the same boat as me. And it's not a happy place to be. It's just not nice. And it's that final barrier between you and getting your luggage and seeing your loved ones again and seeing your home country again and so for him to be able to make me feel wistful about Heathrow Airport it is definitely also one of my favorite books of the year and so that's why I picked this one for my favorite review that I've written because I think it wouldn't it wouldn't be the thing that stands out for most people but I remember how he wrote about the passport hall at Heathrow Airport in this book and um, I mean I enjoyed the book as a whole it's wonderful and I highly recommend it but that's why this is my favourite review that I've written this year. Um, and then we have the most beautiful book you bought so far this year. I did mention that Broken by Jenny Lawson is also beautiful, but technically I didn't buy that one. I was sent that one very kindly from the publishers. Um, but again, this was a, you know, straight away, no questions about this one. This is my beautiful Epic Reads edition of Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which came out as like a special sort of Valentine's edition. They released a few of them. I can't remember exactly how many, but I always knew I was going to get this one. And I just love all the different details on there, all the different Oreos, the fact that we've got these two here, the fact that it is the double cover with the gorgeous, gorgeous lettering inside i love the spine i love the way the spine looks on my shelf and like even where the synopsis is on the back here we've got all the the hearts and everything in there but i'll just let you just gaze upon it a moment longer because it is 
a beautiful, beautiful book and I did buy it. I did pre-order this one um, because it's just gorgeous. It's just lovely. And um, I even like the fact that like this bit here is a matte and then the inside, the double cover is a glossy. Well, you can see just how glossy it is. The matte versus the glossy. But our boys at the bottom here are glossy. I just, ah, oh, they put so much thought into that. And then finally, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So basically, the answer for this question is kind of always like, well, whatever's left on my June TBR, whatever's coming up on my July TBR, which you have to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss. Um, but at the start of the year, I did make my 21 anticipated releases I will definitely be reading in 2021. And so basically, <laughs> you need to go and watch that video and then you will see any books that are left on there is what I'm looking forward to reading by the end of the year. Obviously, we have those three that I've already mentioned that I haven't read so far, but that are anticipated ones and just a whole load of other ones. My June TBR features some July, August, September releases as well, which I am not getting to in June, but I will get to in July. More on that coming. So as I say, make sure you are subscribed, hit that notification bell. Please, please, please let me know if you've done this tag in the comments. I will come and watch and leave you a comment in return. The questions are in the description box below. And so if you want to leave me an answer to any of these questions, do any of these books feature on your best of the year or most disappointing of the year or made you cry or made you laugh or made you happy or you know, did you love a different book to movie adaptation? Talk to me in the comments. I love having a chat with you down there. Um, I will be back with a movie review for you this weekend and then more bookish content coming up next week, including my top 10 books of Q2 because we're now at the end of Q2, very excitingly. Um, so yeah, hit the bell, get notified. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you with my next video. Thanks for watching.